welcome to the Craft Service Table, the podcast where we talk about films, television, art, and entertainment from the perspective of the people who make them. I'm Howard, and joining me today, sound mixer, videographer slash camera operator, production assistant. He has worked alongside Mr. Beast, Mattel, but he didn't choose the sound life. The sound life chose him. Is Derek Coquera. Wow. Welcome to the show. <laughs> what an intro. What an intro. Do you Thank like that you. intro? I like the intro, yeah. Uh, well, it's true. Sound Life chose me. I didn't choose it. Yeah, well, we'll dig into that later when <laughs> we talk about how you came to sound yeah. pretty much. Or how did sound come to you? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Welcome to the show. Thank you for the welcome. Yeah. Um, thank you for the welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to start off by asking the, the intro question that I ask everyone. What's your favorite um, craft service table item thing oh cool that you go for yeah no uh lately for me at least it's been uh what's it called black forest gummies you know what i'm talking about black forest gummies yeah it's much superior much better than welch's and what was the other one mots i hate those i hate those ones. you hate mots i hate mots do you yeah. like welch's no <laughs> it tastes like pure chemicals no but black forest gummies you know i'm not sure if it's organic but mm-hmm. i would assume it is because it tastes so good uh those are my favorite Damn, I never seen them. No, before. yeah, no. I, whenever I do PA work, I always mm-hmm. bring those, and everyone loves. You should them. next time. You should bring it back to me. I should, and I then should. I'll try it. It's, it's um, so good. Yeah, I, I think uh, yeah, Wilch's is a little overrated. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's kind of dumb. Definitely, like, it's popular amongst everyone, but for me at least, it tastes like chemicals, especially think, the grape one. I hate the grape one. Yeah, yeah. I think it became a meme because every set has Wilch's every set, on it. It, it. Yeah, it's just yeah. there. I'm a Mott's fan though. You like Mott's? I, I do like, I know people complain about how it sticks to your teeth, but I like it. I, I'm, I'm going to put it on a tier. S okay. tier, Black Forest gummies. I'm hoping I'm still Black Forest. I'm not sure. Yeah. It's got to be. Not a sponsor, by the way. Not, not a sponsor whatsoever. Yeah. And then the second Mott's and then the last of the barrel, it's uh, Welch's. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I absolutely despise Welch's. <laughs> absolutely despise. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah. All your Welch's, uh, Welch's fans out there. Yeah, I know. I'm a hater. Kind of cringe. Kind of <laughs> cringe, to be honest. But um, yeah, welcome to the show. And then thank you for being here to record with me. I just kind of want to talk to you about kind of your story about filmmaking and uh, where you're at and maybe your future goals as well. Um, so how did you get into filmmaking in the in the first place? I know like you shared this story with us before. Mm-hmm. And it's, I don't know, we just really like the story. It's very cute. And uh yeah, what what is your story? How did you find film? Why a movie? Uh, well, do you want short or long version? Um, long. Long. All right. I would go. say like Medium. split the difference. Medium. Okay, split the difference. <laughs> yeah, right. split the difference. Uh, yeah. I mean, it kind of started with um, well, me like even before I wanted to be like a veterinarian as a kid because I loved animals and it's very uh, I was just you know helping animals was like a big thing of mine, but. Uh, my dad, he was uh, he was allergic to every type of animal, dogs, cats, you name it, even grass. Mm-hmm. People have plants as pets. Can't I can't even have that? I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, one day I was walking uh, to school and not to school from school, and, I, and there was a caterpillar. And I'm like, there's no way my dad could be allergic. So I kept it in a container. Uh, I took it home and kept it in a container, and basically just kind of fed it every day the the plants it needed to be fed, and. Uh, Pretty much from, there was a moment where it was on the stick, it was hanging upside down and it was like going into like it's chrysalis phase. So I'm like, oh cool, this is going to be the moment, but I'm going to be going, I'm going to be gone at school. So I won't be able to capture the whole thing. So I yeah. got my mom's computer. I put it there, uh, press record, left, came back from school. And by the time I got back, it was already like the whole process was done. Mm-hmm. They, they just, uh. It, it, if it, it's in this it's, it's in this chrysalis so yeah i go back to the computer press record like i never press record i just look at the footage yeah start scrubbing through you know mm-hmm. it's like you hear like fast forward like you know yeah. and bam uh-huh. like right there like it's like you can see it like rewind rewind forward rewind forward and yeah. you can see the whole process right there and for me i think as a kid that blew my mind i was like whoa a time machine, you know, yeah. I discovered that, like, I was like, I didn't discover it, but it's just like, it's a really cool, like, idea to have, so after that, I just started recording, like, family events and all that. I didn't even have a, a, a camera, I just had the computer, so I would just be walking around with the, the big computer, just, yeah. like, recording from the computer camera. Uh, then eventually, uh, my parents got me my first camera and uh, started, like, making, like, little videos here and there and found out, like, you know, with movies, so you could do just, like, a whole bunch of like psychological things you could do with it, like the yeah. camera angles. 
And then uh, pretty much from there on, that's, that's what got the... That's got what me. you know. Yeah, yeah. You want to do filmmaking. Exactly. And yeah. just kind of stuck to that. Yeah, you told you told us about that story multiple times in the past, and we all really like that story. It's <laughs> like you discovering that you have a time machine. Yeah. And it feels like it's such a such a cute and like such a naive and pure way of describing cinema and like just video visual storytelling because a lot of movies are kind of feel they do feel like time machine they capture a moment especially documentaries too yeah yeah and uh, we were talking that you should definitely make your future production company logo that caterpillar yeah i mean <laughs> that would be nice i just wouldn't know how to like incorporate it you know just like it's cute yeah no for sure i mean yeah it's uh definitely a big inspiration like, yeah 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 i i remember when i was a kid i didn't even re- remember this fact for a long time until this recent few years i was making short films when i was in elementary school and i completely forgot about it oh yeah the one on your little recorder right the like that tiny point and shoot yeah. sony camera that was coming out in what late 2000 yeah yeah i know what you're about. yeah something like that and then i remember when i was a kid i was just i would just shoot a bunch of short films with friends on field trip and uh they're horror all of them are horror <laughs> movies yeah and i didn't have a computer i didn't know how to edit but so it's just a ser- series of clips on my camera so if you ever want to watch the short film you have to go to the camera watch the clip and then go to the go next to the clip and watch that and then it comes to yeah you, um, you gotta work for your entertainment <laughs> pretty much yeah, yeah. but uh, that that's when we started and also like making short videos for classes yeah that that really piqued my interest but we met in film school we did how long ago was that well since we graduated it was like what two years ago but since we officially because we met before we even met in person yes but do we do we remember each other do you remember me before we met i just remember your profile picture which oh, was uh interesting profile photo exactly yeah <laughs> so no i didn't like like i knew of everyone but i just didn't know like for me, it's easier to remember who you are by meeting you in person. Mm-hmm. So from that day, I think it's been like three years. Wow. Yeah. 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 We've known each other for three years. God damn. That's, yeah. It's a while. <laughs> Ooh, sheesh. Yeah, yeah. We're getting old. Because that first year wasn't really like a real year. Yeah. And then we worked on a lot of student sets together at the mm-hmm. time. And I don't think we ever felt we ever gotten close until after graduation. I say so. Yeah. Yeah. But we worked on a lot of sh- stuff together. I like I scored for your... Uh, senior film Mm -hmm. and then you know as a sound person um, we also worked on a lot of other set so talking about film school when and how did you realize that you wanted to do film school well uh for me so when i was 15 i was i was like homeschooled not homeschooled i guess like like a charter school thing about it like that uh i was already doing like college courses during that time yeah so by the time i got to do when I like graduated high school, it's the time to go to college. I already had like so many credits. So, because originally I didn't want to go to college. I was just like, you know what? People always talk about, you know, not going to school for film. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what I was. I, I don't know. For some reason, that idea was just in my head at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So pretty much for me, it was just like, okay, I'm already there at the half halfway point. Might as well just finish it. So that's what pretty much got me into, uh, to, to, I guess to Long Beach was mainly for two reasons, but that's what got me into film school. Uh, just pretty much just finishing what I've already started. Like I had a mm-hmm. professor named uh, Charlie Myers. I, I guess I could name drop Charlie that. Myers. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, he was very straightforward in um, in his teachings, and he was ex- he was very yeah. He he would say like eighty five percent of people who were trying to make it into the industry would not make it, and that for me true. that was like. As a 16 year old, like, oh my God, that's intense, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I have to try. I have to try. And he, he, he was very straightforward in the sense that, like, you know, you don't even need school to get there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for me, like, I didn't, I didn't even know where to begin. So school was the best way for me to make connections with, to network. And that's, that was my main reason for, uh, for going to school. It wasn't even because of the outcome, it was just more to meet people. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think in a way, Charlie Myers, my boy, Char- your boy, Charlie Myers. <laughs> boy. I don't even in, think he remembers me at this point, honestly. <laughs> in a way, he's not wrong. I, I think, um, yeah, it, you, when, when was the last time that people ask for your, like, educational background when you're on set, you know? Barely. I mean, they don't care. They they mainly ask 
for your experience. They don't ask where you graduated from. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember I was on a feature, and then you you know this story. Uh, we had a we had a friend who was a grip, and then I was um, they were looking for a grip, and then I say, hey, this guy can do it, and then the director was like, oh, can you sh- have them send me their resume? Mm. I'm like, grips don't have resume. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> certain ones do, but I feel like the majority of grips I meet, they just go from set to set just by word of mouth. Yeah, yeah. Just but they have they're usually attached to some sort of camera team, exactly. Some sort of GNE team, yeah. And I also remember speaking of a lot of people not making it into the industry, like mm-hmm. as Charlie Meyer said, I, I was also in this writing workshop a couple of years ago, hosted by someone who's in the industry right now. She came from she she didn't come from film background. She didn't know anything about filmmaking or art. She didn't go to school for it, but her movies are getting into film festival and then you can stream it on netflix and and she just said that the reason why you people don't make it to the industry is because they didn't want it enough yeah. they didn't try it hard enough and she her her belief was like anyone can break into the film industry if you just keep doing what you're doing what do you yeah do you feel about that and i will yes and no i mean yes to like if you want it you have to like try really hard mm-hmm. i think and it's unfortunate because I, I meet some people who really do want to make it, but, you know, financial reasons they can't because this industry is very, you could have one thing one month or you could be booked like crazy in the next month or you could have nothing. So it's very unpredictable in the sense of like financial reasons. Um, but, you know, if you really love film, then you'll be willing to, you'll be willing to live like a, like a college student, you know? <laughs> yeah crashing at couches and uh you know just for helping you know having friends help you out mm-hmm. it, it it must like it sucks but if you love it you'll do anything for it and yeah. i think if you, you have that mentality then you will get gigs and people will find you yeah and i think where where we are right now doing independent films and <clears throat> i don't know about you but i'm trying to get into union eventually it's just really hard to kind of navigate through that Mm -hmm. especially with the the not stable income aspect of it and seeing friends around us who are quitting and just not pursuing what they initially love Mm -hmm. is heartbreaking yeah it's heartbreaking yeah no i mean sometimes you got to make that tough choice and not call it quits, but, you know, take a pause. It, like, just kind of resume to it later. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of our friends, like, the ones who have, I guess you would say, call it quits, I, I feel like they just need a break, you know, and hopefully they'll come back. Mm-hmm. And if not, then hopefully they find something better, honestly. Because yeah. sometimes, you know, stuff like what we're doing, it's not for everyone. It's, uh, sometimes it could be, like, really, like, emotionally intense or it could be mentally intense or even physically <laughs> yeah i think, I think uh it, it's yeah it's, it takes a certain person yeah it's yeah it's not it's definitely not for everyone and we were just talking about this earlier is that hollywood is such a gate kept place they don't really allow people to randomly just roll in yeah and it's such a small town people know everyone yeah i think mainly because people just like working with the people they're already working with i mean it, a lot of it has to do with personality uh like matching yeah if if you're with a good crew and everyone loves like they all know each other's workflow mm-hmm. they're gonna stick with those people yeah um once in a blue moon they'll get recommendations and that's why you know sometimes that's how people pretty much get in mm-hmm. through recommendation yeah um but yeah no it's very uh like you know that old saying you know it's who you know or who knows you that type of deal yeah yeah so it's not like you could just go online and apply i mean there definitely are positions but usually those are like office jobs Mm -hmm. yeah but Mm -hmm. when it comes to like production work you're yeah you just got to go find people i I think um maybe a lot of us have that same struggle with people who are not in in the industry not understanding that aspect of it like why don't you just put our resume why don't you just direct this thing why don't you just yeah do this but 
it's never that easy. No, there's a lot know? behind it. <laughs> yeah, like how do you get that kind of budget? How do you get to that point where people can trust you and investors can trust you? Mm-hmm. How do you get investor in the first place? That kind of shit. Yeah, um, that is that's that is very difficult to to navigate. But um, now that we've been in the industry, kind of quote unquote, <laughs> uh, for a little bit now, ever since graduating, uh, you've been doing a lot of sound work. You are also doing a lot of camera and videography, mm-hmm. uh, wedding stuff. Uh, photography and just doing things on the side for friends too. Looking back at it, we graduated what two years now. Yeah, it's gonna, it's going to be two years soon. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Was school worth it to you? Um, when it comes to learning, when it comes to like, did I learn anything from it? Of course I did a little bit, but what I gained more from school was the networking and the connections I made. I mean, also mainly the friends. I'd say that even before networking, because I. Like many of you guys, uh, like our group and other people, like I became friends with you guys first before even thinking about networking. Yeah. Um, but if it wasn't for the friends that we made in college, I feel like I wouldn't have a lot of the gigs I have now. Um, but when it comes to learning in school, I guess for us it's a little different because we're learning a lot during the pandemic. So what we were being taught was just straight up books, Yeah. you know, like, Imagine this light here and then this angle right there. And then imagine like imagine a sh- light there. Yeah, imagine, imagine a light there and the, the shadows it yeah. creates. Like it, it works for some people. Like yeah. like uh, some people are really good at that. But for me, I literally need to touch the light, set it down, angle it to that direction and understand. Yeah. And for me, I did not. I learned more in my community college than at um, wow. either university. That's crazy. Yeah. And not, not to put the university down, but it's just. It, it was definitely the the circumstance that we were put in mm-hmm. with uh, online. So, of course, I was going to learn more at my community college because everything was hands on. Mm-hmm. So, so what do you say to those people who feel like just who just keep saying that film school is not worth it? It's just stupid. Don't don't go there. Uh, I think you know they if if it works for them, it works for them. Mm-hmm. You know, if they didn't need it, they didn't need it. Um. But sometimes people don't know where to go. They don't know where to start. Yeah. So I think that's a perfect place to start. Mm-hmm. Uh, does it mean to pay like all that money just to go to college? Yeah. Maybe not necessarily. Like I know I know some people like who go to UCLA sets and like and you could find you could find these on Facebook. I mean, if you're if you're listening, you're wondering where you can find some of this stuff on Facebook. Uh, Facebook groups help a lot too. But they go to UCLA sets and they help there. They go AFI. They go help there. Uh, and, and they just kind of hop around from Chapman and all that stuff. So do you need to pay for school? No, I don't think so. Probably not. You, yeah. I mean, we are just one of those folks who did. Um, yeah. but, uh, yeah, no, I think, no, you don't, you don't need to pay for it. Would I call it stupid? No, I wouldn't call it stupid. I just call it just a different path. Um, but you know, everyone's got their ways. Yeah. Especially in an industry that don't really care about your, your accolades mm-hmm. or like, you, well, what you what you know necessarily it's it's literally about just putting yourself out there and then making a lot of mistakes yeah so i think a, a student films especially if you're in film school is, is a perfect place to do student films every week yeah and it's such a good place to discover and explore what you like and what you don't like what you want to do and make a lot of mistakes and and i think that that's how i found script supervising uh and also got me the opportunity to compose and really explore that area for me too. You did your senior film, mm-hmm. Fault, which is this streamable anywhere? Uh, I haven't made it streamable. Uh, I should. Yeah. Everyone kind of, <laughs> not everyone, but the people who've worked on it, they're like, they're asking, uh, I should definitely make it streamable. You know, maybe after this, uh, maybe like wow. immediately after this, just make it available. Oh, wow. I'm going to hold, hold you accountable for that. Check <laughs> yeah, out no. Fault, guys. By this episode come out, uh, Fault should be streamable. Yeah somewhere 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 just look for it it's called fault they're uh directed by Der- Derek coquera yeah i mean it, it's probably gonna be under my youtube account yeah. uh yeah so Derek yeah. coquera is my youtube name yeah go check it out it's a it's a really good film we worked together for the first time kind of intensely i guess uh no actually the first time was your shoot oh yeah 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 Derek did um did sound mixing yeah for for my film and then after that i scored for you mm-hmm. How was making a, a film in such a budget for the first time? Oh, that was <laughs> that was that's fun, um, fun in like an actual fun way for me. Like I was used to working like alone, you know, mm-hmm. like 
get a camera, get my brother. We start shooting, you know? Uh, This was the first time with a crew and I've never felt like anyone, everyone who was there, they always had my back and I've never felt that before. Mm -hmm. So it was very like, I'm like, wow, you know, like this is, there's a crew, like we're working together. Yeah. Um, so that was really fun. Uh, but when it comes to like budgeting and stuff like that, that was completely new for me. Yeah. I, I didn't even know like how much, uh, food was going to cost like that. That cost a good portion. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but what really was interesting was locations. Uh, most of my locations had to like pay for permits and everything. Yeah. Even though we shot at the school, the school was locked down. So we still had to pay for the permits there. Yeah. Uh, to keep the whole building like in working. Uh, but I think for me, it was a good experience. Uh, and especially understanding, uh, like, yeah, you could, you could shoot something and, you know, make it for free, not free, but like voluntary, like have people there to volunteer for it. But didn't understand how much budget goes into food or to wardrobe and all that stuff. It was very important. Uh, and especially, uh, when it comes to like, even like buying a U not buying, we're renting a U hole. That's that's a whole lot of money right there too. Yeah. So understanding the financials of it was very important for me. Um, yeah. I always feel like you had a different perspective at the time, at least to student films and your, your, your thesis senior film, quote unquote, specifically because i remember everyone was just stressing out about everything and yeah. you were just like yeah this is cool <laughs> yeah yeah uh yeah no, i know uh, i know what you're talking about yeah I, I think it's because when people were shooting at the time they're very like this is my baby you know mm-hmm. this is this is the film this is my first film it's gonna be great it has to be great i understand that first perspective like completely like I, I, I felt like, yeah, no, if I'm going to do this job, it's got to be a good job. But I also understood that it was a school assignment. Um, so it's okay, not okay, but it's understandable if mistakes are made and mistakes are made. Mm-hmm. That's the best thing that could happen because when you're actually out there in the field working, you know not to do those mistakes. Yeah. Uh, so I, I had fun with it. I, I, I try to enjoy every minute of it. Uh, but you know, I don't, I don't, um, I understand why people were frustrated. I understand why people were like, like, uh, like their minds everywhere. You know, it's a, it's a lot of people you gotta kind of guide yeah. or direct in that case. But yeah, no, uh, yeah, that, that was my perspective. Yeah, I feel like fun. that's that's very big of you because definitely at the time it feels very life and death, at least for me, and I feel like for a lot of people as well that were just stressing out on a lot of things, but. Yeah, now looking back at it, it's just, it's literally fine. You know, it's yeah. literally, if it's shitty, it's fine. No one's going to like take you accountable mm-hmm. for anything. It's a student film that not, not a lot of people will remember in or, 10 minutes. That or not even watch. I mean, even yeah. like, yeah, I, I remember, it's the same thing with Charlie. <laughs> I remember uh, Charlie we, Myers. Charlie Myers. I know he, he was a big uh, inspiration for me. <laughs> yeah. I, I highly doubt he remembers me. Maybe he does. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, Shout out to Charlie. Shout out to Charlie. Shout if out you're Charlie. Listening. But he was saying, I remember back then, he was like, he was talking about school as well. He's like, you know, no one's going to care like what school you went to, whatever. They won't even care what student films you made. They probably wouldn't even look at it. They'll probably yeah. look at the name, but they probably won't watch it. Yeah. So maybe that's why I had that kind of mindset when I got into it. But yeah, I remember he said that and then it made sense to me at the time. Is there any other person of influence that pushed you into the creative field? Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's always like the the bigger, you know, the the top dogs in the industry, like Spielberg and all that. Mm-hmm. Of course, those guys, like, I guess Spielberg for me as a kid, uh, he inspired me to do things, you know. I remember I had a teacher one time, she's like, it was kind of like a messed up thing for her to say, but she's like, you know, Derek, like you should look at it. Spielberg, you know, he wasn't good at school either. I'm like, I couldn't believe she said that. But I'm like, you're just well, bad at school, bro. I, I, I was, I was just really bad at school. I know. I was like, uh, I was in second grade when she said that. Just a polite way of saying, Derek, you're not very smart. <laughs> I know. I, I, I think, I think the reason she said that because I, uh, as a kid, I failed second grade. So I had the same exact God teacher damn, the man. next year. That's fucking rough. <laughs> but no, I mean, I did look at the book she, she lent me and then, yeah, I read about Spielberg. I was like, and, and that was main, one of the main reasons I went to Long Beach, not knowing the history behind uh, what happened with him in the school mm-hmm. before. But yeah, that was definitely one of the main reasons I went to Long Beach. Hmm. But other than that, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's multiple people uh, that I've met. And I think one of the few ones was... Uh, a guy named Brent Huff. Uh, 
I at the time I felt like you know, like wanting to become a director sounds like wanting to become an astronaut. It's such a bizarre like career to choose. Yeah. And and I remember I always had teachers like you know you should actually choose a real career you know mm. and and I felt like at the time like no one really believes in this as a an actual field you could go in mm. uh, except for Brent uh, he was uh, I used to do he he was a uh, an acting teacher. Um, at the Performers Academy, I'm not sure if it's still in Laguna Niguel, mm-hmm. but you know he was he was really cool. And he's like, no, he's like, no, he's like, I believe in you, dude. He's like, you have to do this. He's yeah. Like, you don't have to do, it, but like, in a sense, like he believed in me. Yeah, that I, I think for me, I was like, okay, like he's doing it, so can I. Mm-hmm. Like, and then yeah, and that, that's one of the guys who motivated me to keep going. That's so interesting that you said that people you always say that you should pick a real job, <laughs> a real career. Yeah. And then like if you say that I want to be a scientist, I want to be an astronaut, people are like, "Yeah, go fucking you." you know? <laughs> but all of a sudden if you turn to art, it's not a career anymore. It I mean, I don't blame them, you know. I mean, if I was in a position as a teacher mm-hmm. and not understanding the field, I mean, probably the only thing they hear from it is just like, you know, artists with no money. That's probably what they hear a lot. And they probably wouldn't want that for their students. So I don't blame them whatsoever. I feel like they're just probably looking for the best for me, you know, finding a career, like, I don't know, like something that actually makes money makes more sense. So yeah, I, I don't blame them whatsoever. Is that why most artists are depressed and fucked up? I mean, it's all, it's all in your mentality. If you're depressed, is this really the job you want? You know, if I mean, I'm, a lot of people say depression makes great art. That's true. That's true. Yeah. But I feel like if you're always in misery, then you should reconsider what you're doing. Is that, are you promoting mental health before art? <laughs> yes, I am. Wow. Yeah. Nice. I, 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 I can, if you're not happy where you are right now, like if you're trying to make it through the industry, mm-hmm. I, I say take a break, pull back, think about what you want to do. And if you're really dedicated to it, jump back in. Yeah. Um, it's not worth sacrificing your mental health for a career. And I trust me, it's easier said than done. I know I've been there. Yeah. Uh, and there's moments where I'm like, you know, like, is it really worth it? But I love this. I love film to death. Mm-hmm. So it is my life. Yeah. And for me, I try to make sure whatever I'm on set, whatever job I'm doing, whether it's video sound PAing, mm-hmm. which is like a lot of people consider it the lowest part of the food chain. I try to make sure I'm having fun with it and yeah. I'm doing the best job. Like I'm doing the best I could get. I can do. Yeah. So yeah, always make sure you're mentally okay before jumping into something that, <laughs> you know, could take a big toll on you. Yeah. 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 I think that's what makes you such a good person for, for being in the industry because we don't, I feel like it to, to, you know, like there's a, there's a thing online that says sound department is the best department because <laughs> they're just like, the coolest and chillest people on set and i feel like that's where you fit in i feel like you're <laughs> literally the funniest the chillest person on set uh, thank you <laughs> you know i try no, <laughs> yeah but shout out to um brent huff right yeah brent huff yeah, shout out to brent huff who also has an easter egg in fault oh yeah if you yeah if you do click on the video uh in the elementary it's like for a couple frames but the elementary school is called huff elementary uh he's in the background but you may know him as uh if you watch the rookie i forgot where it's on but he's one of the actors in the rookie uh that's what he's doing right now yeah 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 shout out to shout out to brent huff (laughs) so besides that um you've been doing a lot of sound work and videography and you also are working with mr beast yeah no uh i've worked on like two of his videos Mm -hmm. uh that was back in it was last year, but I, I can't remember what month. So it was during the summer. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I did two of his videos. And you're also a PA, regular recurring oh. PA at Mattel. Yeah. No, no, American Girl Doll. American. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, I guess kind of spreading more through mm-hmm. like uh, like other stuff like uh, Barbie and all that. Yeah. But yeah, I've been PAing at Mattel at the... I, I get, yeah, I get, I'm a reoccurring character there now. So. Yeah, so, so, and they love you. So how how was those things like? How was it? I mean, you were working with Mr. Beast for like a month, right? Two months, one month? Yeah, like a month. Yeah, yeah. a good solid month. Uh, I was there as a contractor, uh, as a camera operator. Yeah, so what, what, what does your day-to-day 
look like over there? No, I mean, if you if you've seen his channel, it's mm -hmm. very like we're doing the craziest thing in the world. You know? What's up, guys? Yeah. If this video gets two likes, I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> do something crazy. Yeah. Give a million dollars away. Yeah. So no, I, with uh, with how they work over there is very like, you know, we're gonna we're gonna do the best we can because we are the best in the in YouTube. So yeah. that was the cool thing about working with them. Like everyone there was perfectionist, and I yeah. love that there. Mm -hmm. uh, but it it was very intense when we we're shooting because. When we're not shooting, we're prepping for the next shoot, and we're just we're shooting oh, yeah. the next day, next day, going from this location to that location. So, yeah, no, I think if you're a workaholic, it's the best place for you. I think I think that's uh, yeah, go, go look in their uh, their career web website and yeah. just go apply and see mm -hmm. see where it takes you. Does that ever does that ever intimidate you when someone's a perfectionist? Uh yes, yes and no. I feel like yes, it's intimidating in the sense of like wow like I, it someone's looking at every single detail you yeah. know and that's that's part of the job but i find it more inspiring like i see them like that's awesome you know mm -hmm. that's really cool and i want to be like that so i think talking to people like that or just being around people like that kind of encourages more encourages you more to to be i wouldn't want to say be better but to be more aware of what do you even call it <laughs> just to just to just to work, work, not work harder but yeah i guess to work be harder. more particular about yeah. the things that you know i guess i guess making sure you're always doing the best i think that's yeah yeah that, that's, a, that's the right way to say it so yeah, yeah it's, it, being around people who are perfectionists inspires you to be to be working your best i i think that's the it's a great environment and you are pretty pretty light in Mattel as well, right? Uh, what do you mean light? I mean, your people like working with you, and they keep getting you back for. I would assume so. I mean, they, they keep they keep calling me. So that's a good sign. Yeah, I yeah, guess. yeah. So that, I mean, the cool thing about uh, people at Mattel is that everyone's everyone there is friendly. I've not met a single person who has an attitude whatsoever. Like everyone that is there, incredible. It is incredible. Yes. Yeah, I mean, like I mean, you know, I mean, you go to set sometimes, and there's always like that one, always that one person who's just a uh, yeah, one person, two people, whatever, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's also like you don't you don't know what they're going on with their personal life as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, a lot of things could be happening, um, but yeah, I mean, at Mattel, yeah, everyone there extremely nice, extremely cool, and they everyone treats each other with a lot of respect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um, Mattel is pretty much your one of your first PA gigs, right? <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've been doing a lot of like video work. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think to get into like the PA world, that's where kind of starting off. Yeah. 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 So jug juggling between Mr. Beast stuff as a cam op and PAing for Mattel, kind of like you're going back and forth with it. Do you find people treat you differently because of that? Because of Be because of your title. As a PA? As a PA or as other position in other set? I mean, when it comes to being a PA, I, I haven't, um, like, fortunately for me, like, I've not been disrespected whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had heard of other people's experience of, like, you know, yeah, they've had a rough time. So, no, fortunately for me, I have not experienced that. Uh, but when it comes to... Um, when it comes to, I, I, I think it really depends on who you're dealing with. If they've, if someone's telling you to do something and they have no idea what their, what your job is, I think it just goes more back to sound mixing. Mm -hmm. uh, they expect things immediately, it, it, like fast, which it should be. It should yeah. be. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, things should be immediate and it should be fast. But uh, there's there a certain expectation where it should be like, okay, you press button, go. You know, yeah. there's, there's a lot more to it than just pressing a button. Yeah. Yeah. So I think when it comes to certain respect. Yeah, I think there's certain expectations rather than respect. Uh, I think that I'll classify as that. Yeah. 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 I, I think a lot of the times it's just the lack of knowledge and the lack of understanding of what each position do mm -hmm. in, in a lot of places. Like there's a joke that we all, that we talk about all the time. Because you are kind of transitioning from a sound person-ish Mm -hmm. yeah. to more of a camera person ish yeah like you're in the middle of that you're trying to get more videography and camera work um where right now your sound mixing is kind of your bread and butter 
at, at this point. Yeah, South Mexico is the bread and butter. I, I think the main reasons because <laughs> there's like, I don't know, I feel like a lot of people don't know a lot of sound people. And I'm like, especially like in our class, like in order for me to get people on my set, I had to go and be the sound guy at everyone's set and be like, okay, this person's good at that. That person's good at that. I'm going to grab them. I'm going to grab them, you know, yeah. and make uh, put them on my crew. Uh, but by doing that, everyone saw me as a sound guy and it kind of trickles down to what I'm like, what I'm doing right now. So yeah. a lot of my sound gigs is because I was seen as a sound guy. Yeah. I feel like that's very similar to a lot of sound person that we know. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> and we can wait for camera for like two hours. <laughs> yeah. And we can't wait 15 minutes for sound to like change batteries. Not even 15 minutes. I mean, 15 seconds. <laughs> like 15 that's what I meant. Seconds, yeah. Yeah. Just wait until I speed, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's mainly because people look at a camera, like I guess producers or client, you know, and they look at it, they see the visuals, they see it like yeah. on the spot. Whereas like sound, they don't hear it until post-production. Yeah. And then that's like when they're like, oh, we should have done this, should have done that. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the main reason that happens. But yeah, no, I feel like... Uh, <laughs> Like when it comes to like being on a camera team, a camera department, and then sound department, there's people are a little bit more flexible with camera. I, yeah. I think there's more understanding. Uh, there's more reason there than sound department. Yeah, I think sound department like like don't get me wrong. Like we should be ready all the time, but sometimes like the little things here and there. Yeah. Uh, like. Yeah, there's there's more like why aren't you ready? Why aren't you ready? You know. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. I, sure. I just feel like there's more understanding when it comes to camera stuff because people show up and look at that huge yeah they look thing at the, of yeah, a camera <laughs> that has so much buttons, the and big lens, weird and... cables, and it's just like wow, that's like a very sophisticated piece of machinery mm -hmm. um, that is going to capture everything that we see. Yeah. But for sound, is a dude in the corner with the headphones. <laughs> you know yeah yeah just just holding a stick in the air <laughs> yeah so how, how hard can i can that be we can't wait for 15 seconds that that is also crazy too during long takes you know like that gets tiring like yeah. you could have a vest you could have a harness or whatever you know but it's still good it's gonna like long like a six eight minute take yeah it's, your arms are gonna be killing you yeah yeah so yeah i think a lot of people don't understand like not people but just like that cuts are necessary. <laughs> yeah. And like people would rent out a second camera, but wouldn't get a pair of contacts or, mm -hmm. or a boom op, you know? And like for a lot of gigs that you do, I feel like you're mixing and boom opping at the same time. Well, that seems to be the case for a lot of productions, uh, where they just expect the guy to be holding the, the boom pole and mixing at the same time, mm -hmm. which is like, maybe like budget wise, it makes sense, you know, but you know, to, to make sure you're getting like the best, quality i think it's better to have a two-person team uh someone who's mixing making sure whatever something is about to peak mm -hmm. you lower it down yeah. or you make sure you're making sure everything's level mm -hmm. and then the boom operator making sure you know the mic microphone's in the right spot so yeah no it's definitely a two-person team but sometimes budget doesn't allow it yeah yeah so what so what does your how does your day look like when it comes to sound mixing uh, well, it depends. I mean, it depends who I'm working with. If I'm working solo, mm -hmm. it's pretty much, you know, a lot of times they ask for lobs, so I just lob up the actors, and then I look at the room and see what I could do. Like, let's say if there's a chair, you know, making sure that's not going to make any noise, so I put some, uh, I forgot what you call it, but it's like some padding, mm -hmm. uh, so it won't be going, ur, ur, ur. it's just more, more smooth, like, shh, shh. yeah, yeah, it's less quiet, it's more quiet. Mm -hmm. I know uh, some people do it to heels. Yeah. Like you put that thing on bottom of the heels. You could put it on heels. I think the best way to do that, depending uh, depending on like the scene, you could either uh, put a ferny pad on the ground. It makes it less intense. Uh, but then again, ferny pad could make them wobble and make them fall. So it might be a little it's dangerous. Safety hazard. Yeah, yeah, safety hazard. So sometimes it's just better to put something in the bottom of the, yeah. the heels, depending on the, how big the heel is as well. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's just... Pretty much making sure everyone has clean dialogue. That's basically my day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like making sure nothing's going to interrupt it. You yeah. know, making sure uh, if there's a plane flying over, you know, we hold mm -hmm. for sound. Yeah. Uh, especially if it's like extremely noticeable. Um, but when it comes to sound mixing, that's that's what I'm looking for. Just clean dialogue. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you would discuss it with the filmmakers, especially the director beforehand? That you, do you call hold for sound that kind of thing or 
um, you tell the director to make the call? It depends on the director. I yeah. mean, I sometimes I talk with them before. Well, it, most of the time I would talk with them beforehand, see their communication style. Because sometimes directors want, despite like something happening in the background, they want the whole thing just in case, you know, for, yeah. you know, they, they have that take. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times I'll just like, I'll tell them like, I'll give you like a hand motion or mm-hmm. I'll, I'll look at you and I'll, it sounds not good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and a lot of that's going both to director or if it's going, ma- most of the time it's going to the script supervisor because uh, go- the director's mainly looking at performance. They're looking at this and that mm-hmm. uh, with the angle of the camera. Is, so script supervisor is usually the one I'm talking to. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's like super urgent, yeah, I'll, I'll tell them direct. I'll tell that person directly. Yeah. It, it's, it's very different from person to person. I feel like, yeah. Cause I always have that conversation with the director too, as a script supervisor saying that if there's something wrong with a mid take, do you want me to stop you? Like, mm-hmm. do you, what do you want me to handle it? Yeah. Do you want me to just like point at the screen or just, like what do you want me to what role do you want me to play on set when when there's something wrong yeah every yeah. every person has like the, every director has their own preference yeah and depending if it saves them time or it saves them a take yeah yeah so yeah yeah so um what's the difference then when you work as a sound person and as a camera person how do people perceive you differently uh i i say mainly i don't know like, I don't want to put, like, a victimized mentality, but it's just more like, I feel like I do get a little bit more respect in the camera department. Mm-hmm. Uh, the sound sound department is just more like, you know, priorities camera, which it should be, but sound should also be a priority, and I feel like that's not really considered. It's, it's, I feel like it's half a, half of the picture, right? Yeah. Not, no, not no. the actual literal picture, but... No, yeah, when yeah. it comes to the final product, I, I say yeah. it's even more than half. Yeah. I say it's like a good 75, maybe to 80% of the movie. Yeah. If you don't have any good dialogue, it's not. no one's going to want to watch it. Like, yeah. not got dialogue, but if it's not clear, if it's not good... Yeah. Yeah, if it doesn't sound well, good, whatever, whatever proper grammar that is. Yeah. If it doesn't sound good, then no one's going to want to watch it. It doesn't matter how amazing the, the picture looks. Mm-hmm. If you can't hear it, then if the sound is shitty, then if it's, it's, yeah, it's the sound shitty, you right out of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that's definitely something to consider. <laughs> and I feel like that's such a known thing that I feel like every pe- every person who works who knows about film know that concept, but somehow it's still not being really in- implemented into how we work on set. It it depends. Some people understand that, and some mm-hmm. people don't. It depends on the set. I think uh, a lot of the lower budget stuff I work on, I think that's where that conflict comes. Uh, but when it comes to higher budget things, they have that understanding and they make sure. So it, it really depends on what production you're working on. Yeah, I yeah. suppose so. Yeah. Yeah. How do you negotiate pay then? Negotiating pay. Yeah. <laughs> this is an interesting topic that we were just talking about it like a week ago. I think so. Where um you know someone is lowballing you. All the time. Yeah. Or or <laughs> just yeah, all the time, every fucking set. Yeah. But it's also kinda hard to kinda negotiate things that you deserve. Like for a script supervisor, it's hard it's I feel like it's even harder for than than sound people to like explain what you do and what you need. Yeah. So a lot of people don't know script supervisors have they need prep days. Mm-hmm. If you want my job if you want me to do my job well, and if you want me to know the script better than the writer and the director and the DP, I need at least a couple of days of prep, right? Mm-hmm. We're already catching up. By the time script supervisors are are hired, the AD, the director, the DP have already been working on the script for like two or three months, even more than that. Yeah. So we're always playing catch up. So on top of that, you know, prep days, wrap hours, a lot of people don't. We got a visitor. We got a visitor. We're back. We just got interrupted by some missionaries. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, spread the word of Jesus Christ. Uh, but we are back. Uh, we were talking about pay. Yes. Yes. So we need prep days. We need rap hours. So if you need, if you want rap for your assistant editor at the end of the day and your productions, it takes us an hour extra after rap to mm-hmm. like get the documents together to send it out. Yeah. 
that's another thing that we need to uh, negotiate. Um, and also kit fee. I think kit fee is such a common thing for camera people and for sound people. But yeah. <laughs> not for script supervisors, you know, we, but we do things, you know, we, we, if you're doing pen and paper, you're using your ink, you're using your paper and you're renting out technically your equipment, things that you need to use for your workstation. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just like a, so such a foreign concept for a lot of producers and a lot of productions. They don't really understand what we do and what we need. So how do you, as a, I don't know, a, a camera person and a sound person, how do you usually negotiate pay when they lowball you every single time? Well, I mean, for me, at least, I it, honestly, it depends on budget, you know? It, it depends on their budget. I think the, the main question that should be asked even before talking about um, the shoot, I mean, no, you definitely talk about the shoot beforehand, but also just the budget is a big question you should be asking because, no, I mean, there have been times where it'll be like, okay, so what's the budget? And be like, well, oh, uh, we got like 300 bucks for like a full day of like interviews and then... They want to the edit and then they want like B-roll, the location. I'm like, that's not, that's like, like that's. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's no. Yeah, it's a big no. I mean, yeah. it, and sometimes you just have to like end it right there. If they don't, they're not willing to pay you more than that. And then just, you, sometimes you just gotta forget about it. And it sucks too, because sometimes like you think about it, like you, I could, I could need, I could use 300 $400, you know, but is it worth the time? Yeah. And I think a lot of times you have to ask yourself that. And it's just more, it's, it's almost like some self-respect you have to have for yourself as mm -hmm. well. Uh, but when it comes to like on set, a lot of times you could slightly get away with it. Let's say if you're getting low bowl like crazy and they're not willing to like pay you uh, what you are expecting. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you could get away with it. <laughs> it sounds like, it's not sketchy. It's just like, it, it is what it is. Like with a kit, kit fee, you know, mm -hmm. with your equipment, if you're bringing equipment along, you could raise the price because you know that's that's what you're bringing along um but sometimes uh yeah if it's too low unfortunately you gotta let it go you know um mm. but because yeah sometimes you're just gonna get stuck in that loop so how does that how does that conversation look like let's do it let's do it right so now. i'm i'm a i'm a production company okay i'm a i'm a producer let's say okay. and i'm hiring a sound mixer yeah all right, so hey, Derek, I hope this email finds you well. Uh, we, I am currently producing a very exciting blah, 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 and we're in need of a sound mixer. Unfortunately, it's an ultra low budget thing. Mm -hmm. like, not ultra. Let's just say it's a low budget thing. Ultra. Yes. And um, yeah, the, the day rate is 150. 150. For, let's say, a week. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, the whole week? No. Per oh. day, 100, 150 per 12 hours. 12 hours. Yeah, that's it. That's How, it. So let's say you want to get to your usual pay, which is, I don't know, 200, 300, 400, 600. I don't remember. I don't know. No, no, no. Uh, you want to you 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 hire. Yeah, you want to hire pay. How do you go about it? it okay, well, one, I think you, you, you tell them your, your original price you go for. You know, that, that people will usually pay you. Mm -hmm. Depending on, like, everyone is at a different pay level. You know, some people are at 400 a day. Some people are 800 a day. Everyone's got a different one. So you let them know first, you know, this is this is my day rate. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, so kind of like letting them know, like, okay, like, kind of like, ask, like, if they, depending on what they reply, like, okay, sorry, you know, we can't do that. Then you just got to let them go. But they try to, if, if you honestly really want to work with them and they try to negotiate with you and then see if you get a little higher pay, then that's when you kind of like work with them. How do I say, how do I negotiate in a way that is not... Scaring them? Yeah. That's, because I have scared people off. Yeah. When I just ask for a very basic rate. Mm -hmm. Not super high. It's pretty standard. But uh, they just never contact me again and then they hire someone else. I think... At that point, I know it sucks yeah. to have like to scare away people, but it's like fishing, you know, <laughs> sometimes it's not even worth it if they're not going to pay you what they should be paying you. Cause 
yes, you could do it for experience and exposure, you know, like, oh, we'll pay you with exposure and just a little bit of change that, in the That's side. a whole nother rabbit hole that yeah, we have yeah. to get into. <laughs> to pay you in exposure? Yeah, I know. I Man. Know. It sucks. It sucks. It, it sucks because, like, it sucks when you're starting off, you know? <laughs> that's a fucking red flag after red flag. Yeah. I mean, yeah. fortunately for me, like, I've been able to say no to those. Like, I, I don't think I'll ever do that. <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah. hope. Let's, let's hope. The only time I <laughs> do free things for people if it's usually just close friends you know yeah. if they're doing a project i'm like yeah i'll be there mm-hmm. you know like i've got your back sometimes they have my back so not all the time but you know but yeah uh but when it comes to neg- negotiating it, if you scare them off like you scare them off but i think it's just you have to have your rate you know and you have to make sure you yourself are worth it you mm-hmm. know you have to be comfortable telling people this is my rate yeah. and you can't back down on it. Yeah. The moment you start backing down and you're going to get stuck in the, the low budget world of like, okay, this guy, this guy right here, he's going to do it for, uh, I don't know, one hundred dollars, one hundred dollars, a hundred dollars for a whole 12 hour day. Yeah. And they're going to tell that producer to another yeah. producer and they're going to be thinking that's your day rate. Yeah. So you get stuck in that loophole. Mm-hmm. So make sure, yeah, no, make sure your rate is the rate that you believe you're worth. Yeah. And don't back down from it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think in, in script supervising community is always a thing where if you if you're getting lowballed, not only are you lowballing yourself, like mm-hmm. it's not good for you, but it's also not good for other script supervisors. Yeah. Because now there's a there's a there's a standard now. There's like a common low ball amount. Because if you agree to let's say two hundred dollars a day. Yeah. When they hire other script supervisors, they're going to think, oh, you are worth $200 a day as well. Yeah. So it's not really good for the community as a whole. Yeah. No, I, I've, I've been stuck in that situation before with videography, mm-hmm. uh, weddings specifically, where it'd be like, oh, like this guy would do it for, you know, like 200 like a day, which is like, it sounds a lot for like a wedding, but it's not really when you look at like the overall payments people are getting. And then this person will tell that person, they'll be, oh, I heard you do weddings for this price and yeah and you know people talk you know it's a it's a thing so i mean when you are starting off it sucks to say but you have to do free work yes know? yeah i feel like it's it's it, we i feel very lucky that we're past that yeah almost, almost. Pretty, pretty much done. pretty much i'd say so yeah, i mean at least for us yeah, yeah but like no if you're starting off like expect to do free work that's yeah. one a of the only of ways work. yeah it's the only way not the only way but the main way of making connections, yes, working with people, yeah, yeah. So don't expect to get paid immediately right away. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we all started that way. You know, I I, I did a bunch of free work mm-hmm. as you did too. Yeah, yeah. And until you make enough mistakes that you realize that okay, there's some confidence in you, then maybe you can start looking for paid gigs because it's a lot easier starting off to get free stuff, mm-hmm. like free gigs, because there's almost almost no pressure because there's no pay yeah yeah it's yeah it's almost like you can make mistakes even though like you should try like as if you are working oh yeah like as if you are getting paid you should that's the mentality you should go with yes um because you know people do they look at you and they see oh this guy does a good job we'll bring him on sometimes you don't even have to, have to look for paid gigs they'll come to you. Mm-hmm. If, you if you're really worth it they'll come to you and i think you've experienced that as well yeah. Yeah. So like there's a lot of times where I, I'm sure in your boat where you don't not even looking for work and it just randomly shows up. And I know for me, that's been my cases a lot of times where it's just like, oh, uh, <laughs> I got nothing this week. Uh, I don't know what to do. Yeah. And bam, something comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also it's just all from networking from like a year ago or exactly. a long time ago. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I think uh, I come along. Like a lot of people come, like I, I meet people who are just like, is it worth networking? You know, like it's worth doing free things where I, I might not even hear back from this person. I say like, when you do free work, don't expect anything back. Yeah. And if you are, that's, you should not be going like, you should be there to learn. Yeah. And to learn and do a good job. You might not even hear from that person two years from now, but they might get you something later on. Yeah. So yeah, don't expect anything. I feel like use your best judgment. Exactly. I think that's my advice. Yeah. Because there are people who are really just exploiting people, which are, which is not, you know. Yeah. Don't take those. But sometimes you just don't know. And sometimes if you just want to learn and get that experience and work with the difficult people and work in difficult situations mm-hmm. and really just home in on your craft, I think it's a good, great place to start. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, any war stories? <laughs> war stories. Yeah. Uh, let me think. Let me think. I can. I, I could give you a couple. I think for me, I, I'll tell you like the most recent one. Yes, <laughs> it's please. Like, it's not even a war story. It's just more like it is crazy that this thing happened. Um, this is a, a guest you're gonna have on soon. His name is Gravier. We we work a, <laughs> we work a lot together. But yeah, shout much, out to Gravier Sippy Sippy Drinky Sippy Drinky. Shout out to Sip. <laughs> if you're wondering what that is, that's just like his username. His, for, his Minecraft username. His Minecraft <laughs> username. Uh, but pretty much we're on set. And we're like we're on, we're rolling fine. We're like we're on schedule and everything. Yeah. Uh, we're just for like uh, we're doing a an ad for a game. And pretty much uh, during like like midway through the day, we we're doing this one scene where this actor is talking to this one actress and another actor is talking to the same actress, and they're talking to each other. And we we shoot all the angles, you know. We got the coverage of everyone. Mm-hmm. We got a wide everything. Yeah. We're almost done. Yeah. And then the producer comes up to us, and she's and they're like. Oh well, you know, actually, the these two actors they need to switch lines. Like the yeah, so <laughs> even okay. though we're, yeah, so even though we're on schedule and everything, we had to reshoot the whole thing. I was like, that's I was uh, like, that's crazy. Like yeah, no, like they sh- we should have been told that like way beforehand. And, but and how does that even happen? I don't know. I, I with the clients that we had, they were looking through like a Zoom call. Uh, oh my god so i'm not sure if they just made the decision right there like oh no let's have these people switch or if it was like because on our script like the script that we had it was we were shooting the way it was supposed Mm -hmm. to be shot Mm -hmm. uh but yeah no like so we had to reshoot that and what it for us okay it sucks whatever but what really sucked was for the actors because they know their lines the ones that are originally given yeah they don't know the like they have to like rememorize the the other line, so we so it, it, we had to take a a lot of takes because they had to get like these these were like chunky like monologues that they're saying. Jesus, yeah. So that that took a lot a long time to uh, to reshoot. Not yeah, it was just yeah, like it, it's just like a dumb a dumb like little thing that happened. But I consider consider a war story. Maybe I'm not sure. It's I mean, more just like a t- it's it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. It's not yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, things like that. I mean, other than that, it's just like it's, it's more like a scheduling conflict in the, of any than anything. Yeah. You know. Uh, fortunately for me, like mm-hmm. I have not had to deal with too many people who are like, I don't like you. Get out of here. You know. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when it comes to war stories, like. Yeah, it's usually scheduling or if it's like the smallest mistake, it's because I guess I'm not sure if someone wasn't paying attention or Mm -hmm. they just decided to change their mind at that second, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, I've had like in the past, like directors, like they'd be like, this is my movie. It's got to be perfect. Yeah. It's got to be this. And they yell yell at people. Yeah. It's my way, the highway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) The the one guy I'm kind of referencing what I'm talking about, (laughs) he was a crazy guy. Uh, he's the director right? he was the director yeah. yeah uh no eyebrows uh, i don't know no what, eyebrows <laughs> no eyebrows yeah i'm not okay. sure i'm not sure if that was like a choice that he made but oh yeah definitely yeah to intimidate on yeah, people yeah. on set no eyebrows whatsoever shaved off completely mm. but that's a vibe <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh i could tell you what we were shooting uh it was like a a remake of peter pan but he comes back as like a teenager i think the <laughs> see that the, 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 the problem is like especially when you're starting off like i like for us we're not too deep in the industry yeah but when you're starting off you gotta you gotta do dumb things like that yeah it's just, <laughs> all the fucking time yeah yeah so peter Pan comes back and he's just like a horny teenager great yeah yeah sounds like <laughs> sounds fantastic shit yeah he's just like yeah he's a college uh he's like a college guy he's like <laughs> oh my god like a peter pan you know and all that stuff. Everyone I've said was like not taking that seriously, but the guy, the director, he's like so sick. Really? Like, he's like, this is gonna be a masterpiece. Sounds like a Tommy Wiseau situation. Yeah, no, yeah, no, it's exactly like that. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I love, I love hearing people's war story, man. Yeah, so, you, you, yeah, you'll definitely come across some interesting people. Yeah, yeah, hundred so, percent. Yeah, they, I think for my war stories, those are some of them. Some of them that stuck out. Yeah, some of them that stuck out. People are people usually don't want to share publicly yeah yeah i mean mainly because usually 
stories have to do with the people they're already working with. Yeah. So they're, they're usually working. They're consistent with the same crew a yeah. lot of times. And that's why they don't want to say those stories. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's the main reason. Yeah. And NDA. And the, and the NDA stuff yeah. too. Yeah. I think uh, a lot of the stuff that we're working on hasn't even came out. Mm-hmm. So we can't even say anything about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Out of all of these war stories, I'm I, like, I always wonder because you work with Sippy. <laughs> yeah. You work with Sippy so so many times, so yeah. often. It seems like you guys are always on really weird and really extreme sets. Yes, we are. <laughs> about dumb <laughs> shit and about <laughs> stupid people. <laughs> you know, and I'm just fascinated by the stories that you guys tell me where I guess I'm on the more lucky side where I don't have as many those extreme situations. But when I am, uh, it's it's always better to have a friend on yeah. set, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of the times when I do get on set is because there's someone who recommended me and they're also working on it mm-hmm. and we're friends. And that whole thing just made the experience a lot better. Yeah, Like I was just on the set this past weekend. It's always so nice to get the email, see the call sheet, and then you recognize a couple names on there. Mm -hmm. And you're cool with them, and you like them, and you like working with them. And you told me about getting a buddy on set is very important for your mental health and just to get through the week and get through the day. Yeah. So, yeah. how you? I know you have a strategy that you told me. I just (laughs) remember this. You told me the strategy, this little trick that you have oh, that I want to pick up. Do you want to share that? with the gum? Yes. Do you want to share <laughs> yeah. that story? Or like just yeah. your... Yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, for me, I mean, sometimes crafty or craft services, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they they don't have gum. And uh, a lot of times people after eating or whatever, you know, or even like in the morning, they have go- coffee breath. Mm-hmm. Uh, they want their, their breath to smell nice. So, mm-hmm. you know, I always carry gum around. And that's like a icebreaker right there. You know, you're just like, hey, uh, anyone wants gum? People always want gum. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's a nice like way to like start talking to someone. But it's also like people always like when they get things, you know. So if you give them free gum, they're going to be like, oh, I like this guy. He's just giving he's, he's, he's giving free gum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a it's a nice uh, conversation starter. That's and, a crazy anecdote. Like when you told me that, I was like, wow. <laughs> I'm blown away. I should do that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just very like simple and uh, it's. Is that like there's no bad intentions? It's just like just trying to start a conversation with someone and yeah. see who they are, you know, and see, yeah, if, they, if you guys start hanging out, start becoming buddies, then if anything crazy happens on set, you have someone to, uh, to like vent to or they can vent to you. And yeah. Just, you know, just buddy talk right there. Yeah. So, so how, how does that person's, uh, how, how do they, what's their role in on set for you? It's like getting a buddy besides just like what's their position? Like what's the what's the importance of socializing like that and finding I, like a person in your corner? I think a lot has to do with it. Like okay, so like the times I've been on set, I don't know anyone. Mm-hmm. You're already like if if you're not already like like for me at least like sometimes you know anxiety gets to you and you're very like you're thinking a lot, you're overthinking, and you you're, a lot of times you're not seeing what's reality. So if you have a buddy to talk to. You know, sometimes they could like straighten your head out and you're not into, you're not th- overthinking so much. And it's, it's a lot easier to talk to someone than to be talking to yourself. Yeah. Uh, and when I say talking to yourself, I'm talking about like just stuck in your thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah. So ha- having someone like having a buddy is always nice to have because you guys could kind of like balance each other out. Not saying like you have to like solely rely on them for all your stresses, you know, but just to have 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 a conversation have things light you know to kind of uh bounce back and forth and mm-hmm. acknowledge that things aren't as, it's not that deep bro you know things are it's not, not as it's not as intense as you would imagine it to be yes yeah one of my thing that i that i discovered that i really like doing in the past i would say two months or three months that i realized recently i love hanging out with hair and makeup yeah i love it um during take i mean it, it is my job to go to departments and just to check in with everyone, see everything, if everything is lining up. You know, I check with DP and AD when they're discussing shots. Are we crossing any lines or what what would be some sort of logistic issues when they're planning the shot so it doesn't so it does the problem doesn't come up when after they already set everything up. I talk to sound mixer, I talk to second AC about slating, I talk talk to them about a lot of that kind of stuff. And I check in with hair and makeup, I check in with costume. To see, okay, this is the scene we're doing. 
are you matching to this costume? Are you matching to this makeup? And a lot of the times I find myself just hanging out in hair and makeup room yeah. <laughs> with the actors. It's just so fun because that's where all the tea gets spilled. All the tea. <laughs> yeah, because that's where like all the secrets, all the gossip on set, everything that's been said in the hair and makeup room. And it's just so fun. And in the past couple months, I've met this costume designer who will be a future guest soon. Oh. Yeah, and we really connected because of that. Foreshadowing. Yeah, foreshadowing. Yeah. yeah. Shout out. Yeah, we just really connected by really being there for each other on set. Mm-hmm. Lightning round. Lightning round. You ready for it? Lightning round? That was a good conversation. Let's jump into the lightning round where I expose all your secrets. Oh, damn. And all put right. you on the spot in every turn. All right, let me just give me a second to get my secrets. Okay. All right, I got them. Okay. <laughs> all right. Favorite thing about being a sound guy? Favorite thing? Uh, I get to talk with the actors. I think uh, that's my favorite part about it. Yeah. You know, uh, after micing them up, we could just like talk with them. You know, yeah. every, actors are so fun to talk with because they all, they're all so different, you know, mm-hmm. and, they, and they love, they love to tell stories. So hearing all their adventures is, is a blast for me. I feel like I'm like, me too. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I think one of the luxury of being a script supervisor is too, because you are a friend mm-hmm. to them. Yeah. Like you need to f- make them feel that they're not alone when they're up there in front of the cameras when everyone is staring at them. Yeah. When they need something, you have to be there for them. Mm-hmm. And I think that relationship is something that I really enjoy every time I'm on set too. Uh, favorite thing about being a camera guy? Camera guy? Yeah. Uh, honestly, it's just, it, with the department, just like the crew, you know, just kind of like, you know, whether it's like opping or uh, second AC or wherever I'm at, just like, just to be a part of like, a small crew that not small crew just like a little a department to make a picture look so nice you know look mm-hmm. so like appealing that's 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 so cool i guess the final product that's what makes it fun mm-hmm. so like so work together to create the final product and it's just like wow we did that we did that <laughs> like of course the camera has a lot to do with it but yeah. if it wasn't for us like we wouldn't have been able to make it look that nice yeah yeah do you have a preference though for a sounding camera what do you mean? Like, which what? one do you want to? Oh, camera. For, camera for sure. like camera stuff yeah. more. As yeah. I said, as we talked about before, you know, yeah. sound life shows me. Not that I don't have a, not that I have a problem with sound. Yeah. But... Wait, actually, yeah, we never talked about that. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to expand on that? Sure. I because mean, because we have friends who feel like sound life, just, sound life chose them. They yeah. didn't choose the sound life. Yeah, I think. Uh, well, for me specifically, what kind of got me into it uh, when I was younger, uh, my my parents uh, they would go to church and I would go along with them. Uh, they would have a, uh, you know, like the, they would have like the band playing the music, whatever. So they had a soundboard and they're like, oh, you, uh, I guess they started volunteering for the sound, you know, and they started learning about that. They started mm-hmm. teaching me how to coil cables and XLRs and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then a community college, you know, I'm like they needed a sound guy. So I'm like, oh, I could do it. And then they started calling me for every sound gig impossible on yeah. community college. So I'm like, okay, yeah. So I guess I'm the sound guy there. Then I went to Long Beach. I'm like, okay, fresh start, not sound. <laughs> and then uh, Parvati, she's like, oh, you look like a sound guy. Uh, you want? Like, yeah, you look like you a look sound like guy. guy. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I, I dabble here and there in sound and like, yeah, okay, like, uh, can we have you for uh, Twin Aces? Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, sure. And because at the time, like, I didn't know anybody. Yeah. Like, it's a great opportunity to get to know people and find crew for my shoot. So then I started hopping. Then I went to your set for sound and other people set for sound and that just got the ball rolling mm-hmm. um and then now i'm here <laughs> I still, still, do, doing still sound. doing sound yeah <laughs> like honestly like don't like i don't i don't mind it but the only reason why it's not like a crazy career choice for me is because i'm not passionate about it you know i don't get that thrill like when i'm on camera mm-hmm. i don't get that thrill when i'm with like that one time uh, uh for for fall you know like yeah. you know like seeing the camera i'll be like okay no let's change that this and mm-hmm. talking with the actors and like that for me i'm i feel like i'm at an amusement park i'm having fun i'm having yeah. a time in my life when i'm doing sound just it's like of course it's a challenge but it's not the challenge i'm looking for it's it feels like i i i want more of a challenge that makes me excited you know mm-hmm. yeah so i i'm fine with doing sound that is so interesting because you're not the only person no no you're not (laughs) yeah it seems like it's every sound guy 
didn't want to be a sound guy. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I was talking to uh, one of the guys at Mattel who, do, who does sound there, and uh, he needed a ride to one location. So yeah. I was driving the grip truck, and I was like, so John, well, yeah, his name is Johnny. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I was like, Johnny, so, um, so what, 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 you chose a lot, the sound life or the sound life chose you? He's mm-hmm. like, nah, man. He's like, the sound life chose me. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, uh, okay, like, what, what happened? What happened? He's like, he's like, yeah, I wanted to be in music. I wanted to be in a band. But he's like, then I started mixing. See, that's what yeah. happens when you start, once you touch a soundboard or anything like that, yeah. you, you just get stuck in that space. <laughs> I feel like that. I feel like I'm more and more so aware of my impending doom of becoming a sound guy. Do you think you're going to fall in this? No, because like uh, <laughs> recently I just met another sound guy. Yeah who is a second sound guy that had the same script supervising mentor as I did. Oh, okay. So they all started with script supervising in the same place with the same mentor that I had. Yeah. Fast forward 10 years later, 20 years later, they're all doing sound now. <laughs> really? I was just like, oh shit, is this like a pattern for me? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get stuck. Well, join us. <laughs> which, is, which is kind of crazy. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, it's a good thing to rely on if you need cash. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, the thing is, like, not too many no- people know a sound guy. So the moment you announce that, everyone's going to want it. Yeah. Like, you as a sound guy. For example, I was doing a UCLA shoot. I was I was on the camera department. <laughs> and the moment, like, we didn't have a sound guy that day, I'm like, okay, well, no one else is going to do it. Let me let me just put some, like, they had a microphone. They had, like, a, yeah. a Zoom H6. I knew, I knew that stuff. So yeah. I just kind of put it together. They're like, oh, you know sound? I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I know a little sound. It's like, oh my god! And then just, everyone, everyone started calling me for sound, and I'm like, okay, all right, let's call yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sound light just chose you. Yeah, yeah, but you know, if if it chose if if you're hearing and the sound light chose you, mm-hmm. embrace it. You know, embrace it. Embrace. Well, that's your advice to all the sound guys. Yeah, out there. no, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, if you're not making, let's say, if you're not getting gigs from other departments and sounds the main one you're getting gigs from embrace it as much as you can you yeah. know i mean feel fortunate feel lucky that that's a department that's you know making you some bread yeah making you some money you yeah know? so uh yeah and just because you're doing that department I, I tell myself this all the time doesn't mean you're gonna get stuck there forever i mean yeah. like right now i hop from sound i hop to cam up i hop to PA. Yeah. It doesn't mean I'm going to be a PA forever. It doesn't mean I'm going to do camera forever. Mm-hmm. My ultimate goal is to direct movies. Yeah. And I think I will get there. No, I know I'll get there. And uh, yeah, sound, sound mixing, it just gives you a better understanding of what what production means. You know? Yeah. I, I feel like that's what we aspire to be eventually, to become a filmmaker that really has at least some sort of understanding of everything mm-hmm. on set. Yeah. So it's always a good path. Like, you know, sound, you know, camera, you know how it's like to be a PA. Yeah. And eventually when you get to be a director, it, it works into your advantage almost to understand those departments and how to talk to them. Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, it helps communication so much more like, yeah. And the workflow is so much more smooth. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Don't feel like it's the end of the world when you're stuck in one department. Just keep going. Just keep You'll going. get somewhere. Yeah. All right. Um, that was not a lightning round at all, but let's continue <laughs> with the lightning round. All righty. Uh, worst piece of equipment you've ever had to work with? Worst piece of equipment. Oh, okay. Wait. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Honestly, okay, this, this one's... Uh, <laughs> no, no, the people on Mr. Beast know. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, there's a one shot where I had to get like a long, like, we're on, I was on a telephoto. They're like, oh, Derek, uh, you worked on telephoto. I'm like, yeah, to, yeah, mm-hmm. of course. So they put me on the tripod. And that tripod, man, was not smooth whatsoever. So yeah. the moments I try to turn left or right, mm-hmm. like I try to like pan or tilt, yeah, I get stuck. Like it like gets stuck. So I'm like, oh my God. So I have to like loosen that thing so I could get like a good grip on it. But that tripod, I hate it. I hate that tripod yeah. so much. <laughs> yeah. But luckily there was enough, we were rolling on something else. And I got, I got some decent footage from there. Uh, <laughs> but that tripod, I hate it, dude. What, yeah. do you remember which tripod it was? No, no. Okay, fuck that tripod. <laughs> no, I just remember I, I had to get the shot. I Like the tripod was like, it sucked, but no, I don't remember the brand. <laughs> Maybe it's good. <laughs> maybe it's good. Maybe it's just you. Maybe maybe it's just me. Yeah, maybe yeah. it wasn't the tripod whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um which is worse a plane flying past every five minutes or shooting a dialogue scene in an extreme wide shot oh plane plane i think <laughs> the, the extreme wide shot like 
yeah, I mean, like the as much as you could do is put like a lob and probably hide a mic somewhere in the shop. But if there's like nothing in the frame, then I mean, worst scenario, you rely on lobs or you ADR. ADR, yeah. yeah. So, but when it comes to planes, it's like if it's going over the dialogue and it's, it's just messing up the whole like for your shoot you know we're yeah we're shooting on cal, uh long beach cal state long beach campus and next we, to the airport next to the airport yeah and we had a plane flying all the time mm-hmm. we saw the plane before we even started making noise so we knew we had to get the shot yeah when we had to and it was just so annoying it was really annoying it was just like okay hold for sound that plane will take like yeah i don't know you know like I mean, a good one minute or two not pass. even like three or four minutes <laughs> To pass, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and we're just we're waste. Like, it had to get to a point where we have to cut, you know. And it messes up the flow of yeah. everyone, when everyone when it comes to camera, when it comes to the actors, actors. Jesus. Yeah, no, like because you know the actors are already in the momentum. Like, okay, we're gonna get this done. Yeah, you know, we're they're in the the moment mm-hmm. of their character, and the moment we have to wait for a plane every five minutes, it's just messing up the flow for everyone. So, short answer, plane. <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> One of your favorite films and why. My favorite film. One of your favorite films. One of them. I can't even name Just all of them. Just pick one. Okay. Just pick one. I know you have a lot. Yeah. Um. I, I, and you said and why? Mm-hmm. Oh, damn. I think, okay, I'm going to say, for me, my favorite all time, Schindler's List. Uh, for me, I love that movie so much. It's just, the even though it's such a long movie, the pacing is so well done. And I feel like every moment of that movie, you just you need every moment yeah and the emotion that goes through the whole thing especially the little girl in the red coat oh yeah. my god <laughs> that that hits me or even just the the way that people were treated you know it was just it was so horrendous and it almost felt like it didn't even feel like a movie it almost felt like a documentary and then yeah. we were this was actual footage That's very what, very effective yeah. yeah and i i think it did its job and you know showing how people made sacrifices to help these people you know it's yeah the schindler you know um it was just one more yeah no one, one that more was person. so sad one more people i one more people it, and it's crazy because it's it's all in hindsight too yeah. you know when he was looking at like i don't want to spoil the movie but it's just the the things you could have done yeah. you know and it's it's almost like it, it almost thinks like what what can you do right now for people yeah and it's like sometimes you're not even aware of what you could do yeah that's so, a very beautiful way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely one of my top uh, Spielberg. Yeah. For sure. Probably my top three. Um, one of your favorite filmmakers. Doesn't have to be a director. Doesn't have to be a director? Mm-hmm. Just name one. Uh, let's see. Let's see. My favorite filmmaker. <sighs> That's a tough one. I don't know. I could go to like childhood where it's like obviously Spielberg, you know, yeah. but I feel like it's more just like nostalgic reasons. Um, no, you know what? I'm going to go with Spielberg. Spielberg, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big Spielberg guy. Hell yeah. I mean, uh, no, everyone is. Come on. Yeah, I mean, How do you I, not I, like Spielberg? I meet some people who like that guy. No, they, they don't like him. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, no, I think, I think for me, it's just like a lot of people say he got lucky. I don't know. Maybe they're no. right. But I think a lot of it has to do with your persistence, you know? And yeah. he made sure he was put out there. Yes. He made sure that he went out there and people saw him. Yeah. And when they saw him, he did a good job. Yes. And I think that is amazing. Yes. Yeah. Luck is a part of it, but... Luck is definitely you know. a part of it. Luck is a part of every success. Yes. Yeah. So, but if without luck, I mean, you can't do it. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, you can do it. You, you, you need hard work. You have to capitalize you on You have to luck. have both. Yeah. You know, you, if you just have luck and you don't have any hard work, I'm sorry, but that boat's not going to last long. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to sink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Biggest fear? Biggest fear. Are we talking about professional? Anything. Anything. Okay. It um, can be, yeah. Go ahead. Let's see. Let's see. I think, I think for me, my biggest fear is not, like, is, is to not do a good job. Mm-hmm. Uh, to that or also just to, you know, thinking I am doing a good job and not acknowledging that I'm doing a bad job. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be blinded that way. Yeah. I, I always want to make sure whatever I'm doing is to my best, my, my best ability. Yeah. And I would just, it would just be horrible if like, I don't even acknowledge that I'm doing a bad job. I think that's that, that requires a lot of introspection and a lot of humility too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, favorite pizza topping. 
favorite pizza topping. Oh, okay. I don't even know what it's called. That's a that's a problem. Uh, when I was in Colombia, yeah, no, no, okay, okay, Colombia pizza at Domino's is the best pizza in the world. <laughs> I don't care. I'll fight anyone on it. They oh always my say God. New York. I got family in New York. I go to New York quite often. You know, they're not as good. It's not as good as not Colombia as good. pizza. Yeah. It's so bizarre. But I don't. I forgot what it's called. But there's a specific meat over there. It's hey, so good, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I forgot what it is. Columbia okay. Domino's Pizza. <laughs> something. Something, something there. there. Something like chur- churri. No, churri. No, chur- churros? <laughs> no, yeah, churros on pizza. No. Uh, f- uh, I can't remember. I can't All right, remember. Just something. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, favorite thing about the film industry? The people. The crew. The crew and the people. I think if you have a horrible schedule, a horrible script, doesn't matter. If you have crew, it's going to make it Hell yeah. the make, best time. Make it, yeah, make it really good yeah and fun it's it for me it's always gonna be the people and, oh, yeah. and, it's, and it's always exciting for me to think those i'm going to be working with more people yeah who are existing right now and they're doing met them never met them they're yeah. doing their work they're like i have not met them but we're gonna our lives are gonna cross one day they're yeah. gonna cross paths mm-hmm. yeah so that's exciting for me and that's definitely the best part yeah uh least favorite thing about the film industry least favorite thing <laughs> the i i say the what's it called why am I forgetting the word? The the consistency of yeah. gigs. The inconsistency. The inconsistency. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's the worst part, you know. It, it but it almost feels like it's the best part as well. It's like a both yes and yeah, no. Yeah, best of both worlds, right? Pros and cons that we always kind of compare freelancer to nine to five yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. I think if you're working a nine to five job, that's crazy. I can never like I, I've done it. No, I've done it. Yeah. It's 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 hard yeah uh but when it comes to freelancing it's very like can we like we need a gig you know yeah we need to pay rent it's hard we need to pay bills and it, it's just like sometimes it's like it gets you panicking so i don't like that about it but yeah. it's also it's good to like make sure you're always doing something mm-hmm. so yeah i mean it, it's it sucks but it's it's good at the same time love hate relationship exactly huh? yeah. yeah are tennis balls green or yellow Oh man, Ugh. you know, I feel like this question is always thrown around. <sighs> the green or yellow? I remember <laughs> we were past episode of Avery, uh, Avery and Dominique. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like, "I'm colorblind." <laughs> I I knew that, but I just completely forgot he was so blind. So funny. Uh, for me, I don't know. I mean, if it's if that ball falls in a green grass, I'm gonna say that that ball is yellow. You know, what if it fell into a green puddle, a yellow puddle, a yellow puddle. I don't want to know what that's in that puddle. Uh, then it's green. It's so which one is it? You got to pick one. <sighs> We're tallying everything. It's green. Everyone's it's, answer. It's neon green. It's green. Yeah. Good answer. All right. Last, last one. Favorite podcast. And why is it this one? <laughs> <laughs> this one, because this, this podcast doesn't feel, I feel no pressure. I feel like I'm just talking to my friend. Oh yeah. yeah. So that's why it's my favorite. And, and it, it's also like, objectively the best podcast ever yeah i mean yeah. it's relatable it's relatable in every way because i feel like if anyone is listening right now that's in our same situation yeah they completely understand yeah yes and yeah. that's why it's the best hell yeah yeah speaking facts no pressure completely truthful answer yep yeah um yeah any last word that's the end of lightning round any last words any recommendation anything you've seen anything you've done anything you've heard recently you want to recommend to people out there Wow, that was a lot. Uh, <laughs> let me think. Uh, I recommend you to keep going. Keep going. Like, beat the Robinsons. Keep going forward. Yeah. So inspirational. Just keep swimming. Or just keep swimming. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anything to see? Dune 2 just came out. I haven't seen it. <laughs> By this episode comes out, it's, Dune is probably out for like a month now. Oh. Well, I'll go rewatch Dune, get the popcorn bowl, have a nice time. <laughs> <laughs> great great advice yeah, yeah great advice yeah. yeah yeah that's the episode thank you for talking to me on this rainy night in I la i feel like this is every time we record it's raining it's always raining yeah it's always like a nice coffee or hot chocolate night you want to get chocolate later i kind of do yeah. yeah great yeah thank you for recording me um well we'll definitely talk more in the future in the episode. future thank you for listening guys uh we'll talk thank with you. other people next time bye very well Oh, I never had an outro like that, actually. How did that feel?
felt good. Yeah? Yeah. That and also when the, the Mormons showed up. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the fucking Mormons. Messed up my fucking Mormon? flow. No, I, I, I think. Who they knows? Said they're mission, they're say, they say they're missionaries trying to spread the word of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. I usually, yeah, usually when that happens, I just start questioning them. Asking all the questions, and then they they don't they get like overwhelmed with <laughs> all the questions I ask them, and then they leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>